Hey all, it's Matt, your Average Gamer, and for this video we're going to be covering my top 10 overpowered builds of all time ranked, and on top of that we're going to be doing a DLC catch-up guide later in the video. And at number 10 we have Comet Azura, Comet Azura, which is an incredibly powerful spell that has a really high damage cap. It can do a ton of damage. It works best though for standing targets like Commander Niel here in Moak. This is absolutely one you're going to want to try as a mage, and by the way, if you're around during launch time, you know Comet Azure was good then, it is still good now. Make sure you have the infinite FP tier, that's something that's really going to help you out so you can keep that beam going. Let's jump into equipment here. For equipment, we have the Carrion Regal Scepter, you can use Lucette Staff, that's good too. Golden Vow, Ash of War, Jellyfish Shield, you can check out the armor set there. We have Graven Mass Talisman, Graven School Talisman, Magic Scorpion Charm, Ritual Swords Talisman, Cerulean Hidden Tier, Magic Tier, let's jump into stats. And for stats, we have 60 Vigor. The whole concept here is to get as much intelligence as we can. We're using Terra Magica with Common Azura, by the way, but if you can get intelligence to 80, that would be even better. We have it at 70, 25 Mind, 20 Endurance, 20 Strength for a well-rounded and powerful build. And next one up here at number 9, we have Ancient Dragon Lightning Strike. This is the Common Azura of Faith builds. Obviously, it has some RNG to it, but it's incredibly powerful. You can one-shot bosses with it, and even if you're not running a one-shot build for big targets, it's amazing. All the footage, by the way, on this video is on New Game Plus 7, probably around Journey 30 or so. I wanted to cover my top 10 overpowered builds, and then later in the video, as I mentioned, that DLC checklist that's going to have weapons, talismans, basically everything you need to pick up to run the most powerful builds in Elden Ring. And let's do some big damage to Radon here. And keep in mind, by the way, with the bigger bosses, a lot less RNG as far as Ancient Dragon Lightning Strike. If you are using it for smaller bosses, then yeah, there's going to be significant RNG there as it's very difficult to get all of the lightning to hit. That being said, it's a huge target destroyer. A truly incredibly powerful incantation, and you can really build around it to do a lot of damage. By the way, later in the video, this is going to be one of those spells and incantations that you want to have, along with Common Desert. The first one we showed, I'll go over all the most powerful ones too. Let's go into equipment. For equipment, we have the Gravel Stone Seal and the Jellyfish Shield. We had a random set of armor. We hit 51 poise. Flox Canvas Talisman, Lightning Scorpion Charm, Ritual Sword and Shield Talisman, Faith Tier, Lightning Tier. Now let's talk about stats. And for this one, this is going to be high faith, so you're going to want 70 to 80 faith, 60 vigor, we have 23 mind, 23 endurance, we have 20 strength, we're using golden vow and halos Shabiri to buff this, and of course we're using ancient dragon lightning strike to do a lot of lightning damage as a faith build. Next up is one of my favorites and one of the most reliable regular Ashes of War in the game, and that's Lion's Claw. It does a lot of poise damage, and even with poise being nerfed across the board for most bosses, we'll go over that later, Lion's Claw still does a lot of damage, gets in those posture breaks, and again, it's incredibly reliable. Truth is, it's just flat out good, and it can be so helpful for so many situations. I actually have an early game Guts Greatsword guide on my channel, so if you're new to Elden Ring and just starting out, I'll leave that in the description below too, and you can start out with an incredibly powerful build. Lion's Claw is absolutely awesome. Let's jump into equipment. For equipment, we have Guts, Greatsword, and Heavy Affinity with Lion's Claw. Any seal for buffs, you can check out the armor set there. Shard of Alexander, Ritual Sword, and Shield Talisman. We have Urtree's Favorite Plus 2, Green Burst Crystal Tier, Faith Tier. Let's talk about stats. And for stats, this is very much a strength build. So we have 75 strength. You really only need around like 51 or so to two-handed and then get the 1.5 times bonus to 80. We have 60 Vigor, 21 Mind, 25 Endurance, Golden Vow, and Flame Grammy Strength. Next up here at number 7 is Ice Spear. And I think, by the way, I made a mistake there. It's 54 strength, I believe. With the 1.5 times bonus, you'll get to 80, and then you can pretty much get to close to the hard cap there and get a ton of damage out of your strength build. Now, for the next one here with Ice Spear, it's one of my favorite Ashes of War in the game. Incredibly reliable, does pure magic damage as well as frost damage. Ice Spear is truly amazing. It's one of my favorite Ashes of War. I think I may have not mentioned that already, but you can literally put it on a Keen Guardian Sword Spear because it has Dexterity, Intelligence, and AR scaling, so there's a lot of versatility to it. You can run it as a Magic build or a Dexterity build, and it's incredibly good. It actually does a little bit of poise damage on each hit too, I believe around 20 something, so that's a huge benefit. Just like Lion's Call, you have that reliability, so much reliability to Ice Spear. You're actually going to see a posture break here right away on Horalu, and it's just very easy to buff. So much damage you can get out of it, and you can keep it at mid-range. Amazing, amazing Ash of War. 
try this one out if you're a dexterity build too, because it can give you the versatility of switching from something like the Nagakiba, a keen Nagakiba with double slash and blood flame blade, to going to a boss that's immune to bleed or whatever, or something that you want to do from a distance, say Beast Clergyman and Malachite or something, switch it up to Ice Spear and you'll crush it. As you can tell, I have a lot of love for Ice Spear. It's really gotten me through a lot. I've done a couple playthroughs with it. It's so easy to use, too. It's just an awesome Ash of War. Try this one out. Definitely recommended. Let's jump into equipment. By the way, this is the Magic version, so we have it in Magic Affinity. Any staff for Terra Magica, any seal, the Spellblade set will boost this, by the way. Shard of Alexander, Magic Scorpion Charm, Ritual Sword, and Shield Talisman. We have the Faith tier, Magic tier. Let's talk about stats for this one. Yeah, I have a lot of Keen builds for this too on my channel. You can check out my top 20 overpowered builds. I believe the Keen version made it in that video. For the stats on this one, we have 60 Vigor, 23 Mind, 20 Endurance. We have 60 Intelligence, 33 Fates, so we can use Golden Vow and Hallish Fury to buff this. And we're using Terra Magica as well for solid damage. And the next one up here at number 6 is Death's Poker. For many of you that use this weapon, it's absolutely absurd. It does pure magic damage, builds up a ton of frost, and the Ash of War, despite the descaling, is pure intelligence. That means you can pump up your intelligence stat, get a ridiculous amount of damage out of it, and the Frost Trail in particular, you have a couple of options you can use with it, but I like the Frost Trail, which builds up, obviously, a ton of frost, but it also builds up a ton of magic damage, and it can make quick work of some of the larger bosses in the game, too. Another one I recommend on this list, by the way, for trying out if you're looking for something fun that does a lot of damage, because it is a little bit slow and can be hard to pull off at times, but the damage is really rewarding. Let's jump into equipment. For equipment, we have Death's Poker. We have any staff for Terra Magica, any seal for buffs. You can check out the armor set. We have the Shard of Alexander, Magic Scorpion Charm, Ritual Swords Talisman, Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman. We have the Magic Tier, Faith Tier. Let's jump into stats. We have 60 Vigor, 50 Intelligence, 33 Faith with the Faith tier. We're using Golden Val, Hala Shabiri, and Terra Magica to buff this. The next one up here at number 5, we have the Dark Moon Greatsword, an incredibly powerful weapon. You have to do Ronnie's questline to grab this weapon. We'll talk about that later in the video when we do DLC catch up. It's a phenomenal weapon, low FP cost, and a lot of magic damage. This is a favorite weapon for a lot of people because for a full minute at a relatively low FP cost, you can keep throwing out beams. They're actually chargeable, believe it or not, too, and it's incredibly reliable. It's another reliable weapon that does a lot of damage that can carry you through most of the game. Dark Moon Greatsword's a staple for From Software 2 because it was the Moonlight Greatsword. It appeared in all the Dark Souls games. I think there's a version of it in Armored Core as well. It appears pretty much on everything, and most of the time, it's quite good. It's a very powerful magic weapon, intelligence weapon. Let's go into equipment. For equipment, we have the Dark Moon Greatsword. Any staff for Terra Magica, any seal will do. The Spellblade set will boost this. Shard of Alexander, Magic Scorpion Charm, Godfrey Icon, Ritual Swords Talisman. We have the Magic Tier, Faith Tier. Let's jump into stats for this one. And for stats, we have 60 Vigor, 60 Intelligence, 33 Faith with the Faith tier because I like buffing stuff. You can get a lot of damage out of it, especially when you charge it. And we have Golden Vow, Howlish Fury, Terra Magica for our buffs for a very powerful Dark Moon Greatsword build. At number 4, we have Mogwin's Sacred Spear, which is a ridiculous weapon that does massive fire and bleed damage. The only downside for this weapon, if there is any at all, is that you have to stand still, much like Comet Azur. However, the Ash of War is absolutely absurd, as you can see here, did 40,000 damage there. It's an absurd weapon that does massive fire and bleed damage. By the way, it destroys most of the bosses in the game, including those with zero fire resistance too, like Radagon, even though they're immune to bleed. We have Mogwin's Sacred Spear. We're using the Dragon Communion Seal. We have the White Mask. We have the Shard of Alexander. Fire Scorpion Charm, Ritual Swords, Talisman, Lord of Blood's Exaltation. Faith Tier, Fire Tier. Let's talk about stats. For stats on this one, this is the Strength and Arcane build. Now, I was using it sometimes for melee, but if you're not using the melee part of it, you can actually drop your Strength down to like 30. The Ash of War is primarily going to be from Arcane, so if you can pump that up to 60, you'll get even more damage. We're using Golden Vow, Flame Grant with Strength to buff this, 60 Vigor as well. And number three, we have my favorite jump attack bleed build, and that's the Scavenger Curve Swords. Between levels 125 and 150, they really shine because you can put them on a Colt, pump up Arcane, and you don't have to worry about split stats. And higher levels, there's a ton that will beat out the Scavenger Curve Swords once splitting stats and the uh, damage reduction for Blood Affinity matters less. Gargoyle Twin Blades, for example, Bandit Curve Swords, a whole bunch of them will beat them out. But if you're playing at meta levels, there is nothing better in my opinion than Scavenger Curve Swords and you can keep 60 Vigor too. 
I've mentioned this in my videos before, but when the Fire Giant makes an appearance in my videos, because I mostly play on New Game Plus 7, he's going to have about 64,000 HP, so he's got a lot of health to go through, but the Scavenger Curve Swords can do the trick because he takes good bleed damage, and it makes the fit fight relatively quick for how much HP he has. He does have a ton of HP, the second most behind Rikard. If you like jump attack bleed builds and you're at lower levels, I recommend trying out the bandit curve swords first in the early game. And when you can get your hands on two scavenger cur curve swords, I recommend trying them out too. They're going to be phenomenal for you. You're going to get a ton of damage out of them. Add in the claw talisman, raptor's black feathers, all the successive attack stuff, and the damage is ridiculous. By the way, if you're following this video to this point and you're not subbed yet, definitely be sure to sub to my channel. You're not going to want to miss out. We're going to be covering DLC like crazy. We're going to be making a lot of fun content, a lot of overpowered builds, a lot of just really enjoyable stuff in general, and a lot of informative videos, so be sure to hit that sub button. All right, now to go and finish off the Fire Giant with the Scavenger Curve Sword Bleed build. And then after that, we're going to go over my top two. If you follow my channel, you probably know what the top two are already. And then if you don't follow my channel, definitely be sure to stay, hang around, and check them out because they're going to be phenomenal. And after that, we're going to do the DLC catch-up guide and everything you need to know. All right, soon here we're going to go over equipment, everything you need to know for this build. We have two Scavenger Curve Swords on a Cult with Seppuku, the Dragon Communion Seal. We have the White Mask, Raptor's Black Feathers, Claw Talisman, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Listen's Prosthesis, Thorny Tier, Faith Tier. Let's jump into stats. And for stats, we have 60 Vigor, 20 Mind, 26 Endurance. We did hit 51 Poise, by the way, because we don't have to split stats. There's a huge benefit there. We have 70 Arcane, a lot of physical damage, and a lot of bleed. We're using Golden Vow and Flame Grammy Strength to buff this. This is a Jump Attack Bleed build, so it's going to do a ton of damage. Sorry, I've been sick this weekend. I lost my voice a little bit, but at number two, we have Night Comet. Now, Night Comet is incredible. It's a ridiculous amount of magic damage you get. With two stabs of loss, you'll have a 60% boost to Night Comet. It has absurd range, it's chargeable, and it can crush most of the bosses in the game. Yeah, the damage on Night Comet is flat out broken. A lot of people consider it the most broken spell in the game, and a lot of people also think that it should have been nerfed by now. It hasn't been nerfed. I don't think at this point it's going to be nerfed, and I'll say the same thing about number one. I think at this point they're fine with it for PvE, but it's just ridiculous with the boost you get and the amount of magic damage. This is one I recommend trying out if you're having a hard time with Elden Ring. If you're more like of an explorer type, then this build and the next one are more for you. And I'm not saying it's entirely easy mode, but for the most part, yeah, it's going to be incredibly easy to run a build like this, and you're going to cruise through the entire game. Speaking of which, I also have an early night comic guide, and I guess this would be a good time to say that I'll attach that to the description below too. If you're new at the game, you should try that out if you're having a difficult time, or if you're looking for a really powerful intelligence build. Yeah, I love Night Comet. Night Comet is so reliable. It's one of those things that you can kind of just walk through the entire game for the most part. I mean, other than Elden Beast at the end, who seems to be the exception for a lot of builds, it's just ridiculous. It's going to chew through most of the boss's HP. It does insane damage, thousands of damage per hit, it's chargeable, and it has incredible range. In a second here, we're going to go over everything you need to know equipment-wise so you can run a really powerful Night Comet build. For this, we have two Stabs of Lost, the upgraded one that you're casting with, any seal for buffs, Godfrey Icon, Magic Scorpion Charm, Ritual Swords Talisman, Graven Mass Talisman, Magic Tier, Faith Tier. Let's talk about stats. And for stats, we have only 50 Vigor for this one because for Mage builds, I tend to only go for 50, 24 Mind, 20 Endurance. We have 70 Intelligence, 33 Faith with the Faith tier so we can use Golden Vow, Hala Shabiri, and Terra Magicka for our buffs. All right, we are at number one, and guess what? Not a lot has changed for the Blasphemous Blade since launch time. It is still the most reliable weapon in Elden Ring. It does massive fire damage, and it can heal you consistently. It is literally the definition of easy mode for Elden Ring, and the most reliable weapon, in my opinion, in the entire game. The Blasphemous Blade is literally stupid good. You can honestly just breeze through the entire game with it. And I know for DLC there may be a lot of fire resistant bosses, but guess what? Running a versatile faith build, you'll be able to use holy damage and lightning damage as well for the incantation, so there's a lot of variety there. The Ash of War is pure fire damage, and it scales only with your fate stat. It has no strength scaling on the Ash of War itself. That's only for the physical portion of the weapon, meaning if you're using the Ash, you can run a versatile fate build, throw in some fire incantations if you want to, and run one of the most powerful builds, if not the most powerful, in Elden Ring. 
definitely pick up the Blasphemous Blade if you haven't picked it up yet. Just like Night Comet, I think you should have that too. We're going to go over the checklist in a little bit. Of course, it's going to have that stuff on there. It's going to have all the talismans, Ashes of War weapons, everything you need to know for DLC. Also, who else is excited for DLC? Be sure to comment anything you want to say about DLC below. We can talk about it. It's going to be amazing. The trailer looked fantastic. I honestly cannot wait for DLC. It's going to be incredible. Let's jump into stats. For equipment, we have the Blasphemous Blade Plus 10. We're using the Earth Tree Seal. Any armor set works. We have 51 Poise, Shard of Alexander, Fire Scorpion Charm, Ritual Sword, and Shield Talisman, Faith Tier, Fire Tier. Let's jump into stats. By the way, I have a new mic. I don't know if it's better. If you want to comment below and let me know if you like this one better than my previous one. We have 60 Vigor, 23 Mind, 23 Endurance. We have 70 Faith, and we're using Golden Vow and Halish Shabiri to buff this. It's pure fire damage, so Halish Shabiri will do about 5% more than Flame Grant Me Strength. And now for the DLC catch-up. The spells and incantations that you're going to want to grab before DLC are Ancient Dragon Lightning Strike, Night Comet, Comet Azur, Carrion Slicer, Burnal Flame, Giant's Flame Take Thee, Duel's Moonblade, both Moon Spells, Pest Threads. And for buffs, you're going to want Flame Grant Me Strength, Terra Magica, Howl of Shabiri, Golden Val, the Jellyfish Shield, and then you're going to want to have Blood Flame Blade too. You want all those buffs so you can mix it up and make really powerful builds for DLC. Now for Talismans, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, Melissa's Prosthesis, or both, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Claw Talisman, Kindred of Rot's Exaltation, Magic Scorpion Charm, all Elemental Scorpion Charms, Axe Talisman, Red Feathered Branch Sword, Golden Scarab. You're going to want the Godfrey Icon for chargeable spells, Graven Mask and Swool Talisman, Urtree's Favorite Plus 2, Shard of Alexander is a must, Roar Medallion, Great Jar's Arsenal, Green Turtle Talisman, Ritual Shield Talisman, Flox Canvas Talisman, and the Silver Scarab as well. And for the most powerful Ashes of War, you're going to want Lion's Claw, Ice Spear, Seppuku, Double Slash, Square Off, the Glint Blades, Royal Knight's Resolve, Wild Strikes, Flaming Strike, Black Flame Tornado, Blood Blade, which is one of my favorites. You're going to want Earth Shaker because it's so much fun, Spinning Strikes, Spinning Slash, Carrion Grandeur, Prayerful Strike, Brag Earth's Roar, Repeating Thrust, Storm Blade, Craig Blade, although it's ner it was nerfed, it's still quite good, Lightning Slash, and on Sheath. For quest, you're going to want to make sure that you do Melissa's quest line, Ronnie's quest line, Alexander's quest line, Rosier's quest line, Fia's is really cool, and I think there's an achievement for that ending, Sorceress Selen, Gallery, Selyavis for the Magic Scorpion Charm. You're going to want to get all bell bearings for Smithing Stones, unlock Mogwin's Palace before DLC so you have the best farm available, Sleeping Pots, Fetid Pots, and Blood Boil Aromatic, Stone Sword Keys, Mushrooms and Trina's Lily. More on this soon. I'm going to make a more in-depth guide on that content. And for weapons, you're going to want the Blasphemous Blade, Scavenger Curve Swords, Guts Greatsword, the Big Greatsword, Giant Crusher, Guardian Sword Spear, Dark Moon Greatsword, the Envoy's Longhorn, Nagakiba, Death's Poker, Marius Executioner's Sword, Reduvia, Rusted Anchor. You're going to want Bloodhound's Fang, Mogwin's Sacred Spear, Moonveil, Bloodhound's Claws, the Zweehander, Starfist, Gargoyles, Twin Blades, anything else for fun, but we've covered most of the OP stuff. And what changed? The Rivers of Blood has been nerfed five times, just okay now. Flame of the Red Main's poise damage is down from 40 to 10. Poise damage on big weapons has been nerfed majorly. Moonveil is mostly the same since launch. Bloody Slash takes more HP, Seppuku as well. Mimic is still good, but not launch good. Cragblade was nerfed, but it's still kind of decent. Still pretty good, actually. Seppuku, I already mentioned, it takes more HP. Stars of Ruin tracks more poorly. Horfoss Stomp, uh, that kind of sucks now, to be honest. Sword Knight Flame was nerfed and buffed again. Great Shield Talisman has been nerfed with a Fingerprint Shield, which was also nerfed. And that should get you up to speed. If you haven't been following Elden Ring, but you're jumping back in because of all the hype this weekend, now you're all caught up. You can pause those if need be and read everything off and make a checklist of your own. But that's basically everything that I use to make overpowered builds and the stuff that you're not going to want to forget for DLC. Thanks for watching this. It was a crazy weekend. I hope you guys are enjoying my content. I've been sick a little bit, so I'm finally going to get a chance to rest. Probably won't see me again until next weekend. Be sure to hit that sub button, and I will catch all of you soon.